Ah yes, you've managed to use nearly all of your PC storage after putting off backing up your files for the last two years. And just when you finally decide to do so, you get this. What is going on guys? I am AJ and today we're going to be covering RAID. RAID! No, no, not that one. Now that I've dated myself, I'm talking about one way you can back up your data. So stick around and let's discuss this. So first off, RAID is short for Redundant Array of Independent Disks, which describes the method in which your data is written, stored, and most importantly, made redundant. And for those of you who may not know, I'm not talking about this kind of a disk, but this disk or drive. I'll probably use both terms interchangeably throughout this video. Now, of course, there are different RAID configurations with different corresponding numbers. The first one we'll cover is RAID 0. Now, it's important to note that in order to set up any level of redundancy, you're going to need at least two drives. Now, when it comes to RAID 0, it should be noted that calling it RAID may not be the most accurate label as it doesn't provide any level of redundancy. When set in RAID 0, data is striped in blocks across multiple drives. While the pros might be the fastest read write speeds across the board, as well as higher total available capacity, if one disk fails, barring any recovery, your data is toast. Burnt inedible toast. Which is why our next entry, RAID 1, is the go-to as it provides simple but effective redundancy. In this setup, data is mirrored across two or more drives. Do keep in mind that this does come at the cost of write speeds as multiple drives are written to simultaneously. In addition to this, your available capacity is going to be less than the total capacity. If, for example, you have two 10 terabyte drives, rather than have 20 total terabytes of storage, you'll have 10 as the data written to both will be identical. So, in the event of one drive failure, your data will still be intact as long as the other drive isn't compromised. Next up are RAIDs 3 and 4, which aren't too commonly used outside of enterprise purposes. With a RAID 3 setup, data is striped at the byte level across multiple drives, with one dedicated drive storing something called parity. Parity contains the information necessary to rebuild and restore data in the event of a drive failure. Unlike RAID 1, RAID 3 has a much faster read-write speed. Because of this, this mode is best when used by high-demand applications like live streaming, broadcasting, and large-scale video production. While striping data on the block level as opposed to the byte level, RAID 4 also stores your data across multiple drives, with one dedicated to storing parity info. Now with RAID 5, the data is striped across multiple drives, with parity being stored in each as opposed to one dedicated drive. Because the parity is spread across multiple drives, read speeds are relatively fast, but comes at a cost of write speeds being slower. On top of that, RAID 5 can't endure more than one drive failure at a time. When it comes to both speed and redundancy, RAID 5 is the most balanced and commonly used configuration. RAID 6 can be considered an extension of RAID 5 as it essentially doubles the parity, extending its tolerance to allow up to two drive failures instead of just one. Both of these configurations are best suited for large file and application servers. And finally, we have RAID 10 or RAID 1 plus 0 as it combines the redundancy of RAID 1 and the speed of RAID 0 by striping data across mirrored pairs, for which you'll need at least 4 drives. RAID 10 offers balanced speed and fault tolerance. Since data is mirrored like RAID 1, should one disk fail, your data is still safe. On top of this, the lack of any parity calculations allows the setup to operate as fast as it does. While this does seem like the best of both worlds, do keep in mind that this does come at a cost of lower available capacity as well as, well, the cost. 
which is why RAID 10 is more common when it comes to massive database servers. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you want to hear me ramble on about PC related content, then mosey on over to this video right here.